Subscribe this channel and press bell icon to get notifications for latest and informative videos before anyone. Interlocking concrete paver blocks. Interlocking concrete block pavement known as ICBP has been extensively used in a number of countries for quite some time. As a specialized problem solving technique for providing pavement in areas where conventional types of construction are less durable due to many operational and environmental constraints. This technology has been introduced in India in construction a decade ago for specific requirements like footpaths, parking areas, margin space of residential plot etc. but now being adopted extensively. The construction and laying of concrete block pavement as a new approach in construction of pavement using interlocking concrete paver blocks. Introduction Concrete paver blocks were first introduced. CED in Holland in the 50s as replacement of paver bricks which had become scarce due to the post-war building construction boom. These blocks were rectangular in shape and had more or less the same size as the bricks. During the past five decades the block shape has steadily evolved from non-interlocking to partially interlocking to fully interlocking to multiple interlocking shapes. Physical requirements. Since zero slump concrete is used in production of paver blocks, the quality O. F blocks produced will depend upon various parameters like the capacity of compaction and vibration of machine, grade of cement used, water content, quality of aggregates used, the gradation and mix design adopted, additives used. Handling equipment employed, curing method adopted, level of supervision, workmanship and quality control achieved, etc. Shapes and classifications. Type A. Paver blocks with plain vertical faces. Which do not key into each other when paved in any pattern. Type B. Paver blocks with alternating plane and curved corrugated vertical faces which key into each OT. Her along the curved corrugated faces when paved in any pattern. Type C. Paver blocks having all faces curved or corrugated which key into each other along all the vertical faces when paved in any pattern and Type D, L and X shaped paver blocks which have all faces curved or corrugated and which key into each other along all the vertical faces when paved in any pattern. Materials. The quality of materials. Cement concrete strength, durability and dimensional tolerance of paving blocks, etc. is of great importance for the satisfactory performance of block pavements. Bedding and joint filling sand. It is well established that if proper attention is not paid to the quality of bedding sand, and if the thickness of bedding sand layer is not uniform enough, serious irregularities in surface profile can result. Excessive differential deformation and rutting can OCC. Your early in service life of the block pavement. The gaps in between two adjacent paving blocks, typically about 3 mm wide, need be filled with sand, relatively finer than the bedding sand itself. Similarly, it is not advised to use cement in the joint filling sand, which may not only make it difficult to completely fill the joints, but may also adversely affect the desired flexibility characteristics of the paving block layer. The joint filling sand should be advisably as dry as possible otherwise complete filling of joints may be difficult. Base and sub-base materials. The engineering PR. Properties of base materials are the load spreading properties to disperse stresses to the subgrade and the desired drainage characteristics, having an important bearing on the performance of a block pavement. Interlocking concrete block pavement. 1. Installation of subsurface drainage structures. 2. Leveling and compaction of subgrade. 3. Provision and compaction of sub-base course where needed. 4. Provision and compaction of base course and checking for correct profile. 5. Installation of edge restraints. 6. Provision and compaction of coarse bedding sand. 7. Laying of blocks and interlocking. 8. Application of joint sealing sand and compaction. 9. Cleaning of surface. 10. Filling any remaining empty portions in the block layer especially near edge restraint blocks with in situ concrete. Construction of subgrade. This is the foundation layer over which the block pavement is constructed. Like in conventional pavements, the water table level should not be at a level of 600 mm or higher, below the subgrade level. It should be compacted in layers of either 150 mm or 100 mm thickness. 
edge restraint blocks and curbs. Concrete blocks on traffic pavements tend to move sideways and forward due to braking and maneuvering of vehicles. The tendency to move sideways has to be counteracted at the edges by special edge blocks and curbs. The edge block should be designed and anchored to the base such that the rotation or displacement of blocks is resisted. These are to be made of high strength concrete for withstanding the traffic wheel load without getting damaged. These members should be manufactured or constructed in situ to have at least a 28 day characteristic compressive strength of 30 megapascals a flexural strength of 3.8 megapascals. As far as possible the edge blocks should have vertical face towards the inside blocks. Advantages and limitations. Mass production under factory conditions ensures availability of blocks having consistent quality and high dimensional accuracy. Good quality of blocks ensures durability of pavements when constructed to specifications. ICBP tolerates higher deflect. Irons without structural failure and will not be affected by thermal expansion or contraction. It does not require curing, and so can be opened for use immediately after construction. Constructio. N of ICBP is labor intensive and requires less sophisticated equipment. The system provides ready access to underground utilities without any damage. Maintenance is easy and simple and it is not affected by fuel and oil spillage. Low maintenance cost and a high salvage value ensures low life cycle cost. However, important limitations are. Quality control of blocks at the factory premises is a prerequisite. Any deviations of base course profile will be reflected on the top surface. High quality and gradation of coarse bedding sand and joint filling material are essential for good performance. Conclusion. This technology can provide durable and sustainable surfaces where construction and maintenance of conventional surfaces are not cost effective. Also, it is much cheaper than rigid pavement like concrete, designed for identical conditions.